sometimes it can feel like you need superpowers to understand the cosmetic ingredients on the label. And yeah, sure, it's probably easier just to ignore labels, but they're really there to help you, the consumer. The label can help you make informed decisions instead of blind ones. It can also help you avoid things you're allergic to, pick out ingredients you think are effective, and even cause shenanigans on bogus cosmetic claims. You just need to know where to start. I got into reading labels when I looked at the list of ingredients on the back of my shampoo and I couldn't identify a single ingredient. I didn't know what was working and what wasn't and I was filling up a drawer and wasting money with a bunch of useless products. A drawer, well that's prime real estate in San Francisco. It could be somebody's condo. Remember memorizing all those chemical names in chemistry class and thinking, when am I ever gonna use these? Well, in this case, you were right. The cosmetic industry doesn't even use those names, which come from the IUPAC chemical naming system. Instead, they come from the international nomenclature of cosmetics ingredients, which sounds really boring. So everyone just calls it inky. Before 1973, people could call ingredients whatever they wanted. It was total chaos. So the goal was to make things more uniform, especially for global trade. Did it work? Mm, I don't really know. The current naming system is a mix of common names, chemical structures, and Latin names. I like to call it the ASS system for all sorts of stuff. Every cosmetic product needs to have the ingredients listed. Any ingredient that's above 1% is required to be listed in order of concentration. At 1% or below, the ingredients can be listed in any order. You can't really see this 1% line, it's not visible on the label. So only the manufacturers know the actual concentrations. However, if you want to start to learn the approximate concentrations used in formulas, you can start to guess where the 1% line is. For example, preservatives and fragrances are usually below the 1% line. They don't need really high percentages. Once you know this, reading the label can really help. One marketing trick is when a cosmetic product emphasizes a certain ingredient, but only includes tiny amounts of that in the product. So you might see a big splashy picture of a strawberry or an avocado, but when you flip around the bottle, you'll see that the signature ingredient is way down on the list, meaning that there's not much there as you would expect. Like this Moroccan oil conditioner. After water, the next highest ingredient is dimethicone? Or how about this pomegranate conditioner where the pomegranate is way down here with fragrance? Sometimes the label can help uncover things you didn't even know. For instance, let's talk about fragrance. A single fragrance can include over 40 ingredients and because they're considered trade secrets, they're allowed to go on the label as fragrance. You have no way of knowing all the chemicals they use. Tricky, I know, but that's a cue to talk to the manufacturer and see if you can get a little bit more detail about what their fragrance ingredients are. Recently, there has been a push for greater transparency and some of the larger companies like Procter & Gamble, Unilever, and Johnson & Johnson have committed to listing the ingredients of their fragrances in the near future. So don't be afraid. Next time you buy a product, take a closer look at the label and see if you find anything interesting or weird and tell me about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.